Hi, and good evening. I'm Mrs. Santoro. I'm the principal at the middle school, and I'd like to welcome you to our first virtual parent orientation. It's going to be a little different for all of us, but we'll get through it together, I promise. Middle school is really an exciting time for students and we fully understand that not only with excitement comes emotions, anxiety, and trepidation with starting a new school. But we want you to know that we are all here for you and to put your mind at ease, we're going to try and introduce you to some of the key people that will be able to help you with this transition. This morning, your students were introduced to the middle school with our STARS orientation program provided by our Atlantic Care Youth Center and our student STARS. Tonight, we're going to touch on some of the important highlights for the parents. Our theme for the middle school this year, we're kind of excited about, is called U.S. Road Trip because learning takes us places. Our theme is going to allow us to explore the great diversity and ethnicity across our country and how it impacts us locally and globally. I think it's going to be an exciting time for students to explore different parts of the United States and the things that make them unique. This year, the middle school is implementing a new start and end time, which I know is causing some anxiety for people, but let's talk about that. So students are going to start to arrive at the middle school at 7.30 and can arrive anytime up to 7.45. Your first class will start at 7.45 in the morning and our day will end at 2.15. We started this idea a few years ago to try and create more continuity with the high school to provide more opportunities for our students to uh, meet with and be involved in clubs and activities with the high school students and also for our teachers to provide greater collaboration academically and socially for our students. Students can arrive to school, as we said, in the morning between 7.30 and 7.45. Students can arrive either by bus or as a car rider. Car riders are going to have a newer and safer drop-off route um, that will hopefully alleviate some of that backup we get going all the way out to Weymouth Road. And it's going to provide for a much safer entrance and exit for our students. The car rider lane is going to be detailed in the upcoming welcome packet that you're going to receive and it's going to be laid out very nicely for you. The route that you'll follow in, where students will be dropped off, and where students will be picked up. So hopefully that's going to make things a lot easier for the families, especially those that have been here before for drop off and pick up and know that it can get a little congested. Um, there's lots of new changes that are taking place in all of the schools this year due to COVID-19 safety precautions. And although they're going to alter a little bit what the middle school looks like, just rest assured everything was designed for the safety of your students and the staff. First thing that's most important is all of the students and all of the staff are going to wear masks all day. Myself included, I'll be wearing my mask whenever I leave my office and I'm not around, and I'm around the students. I will always have my mask on whenever I am in the building. So when students enter the building and staff enter the building with their masks on, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to go through a heat sensor, excuse me, a temperature sensor, and it's going to be an archway that the students are going to walk through, the staff is going to walk through, and it's going to give them a temperature screening. There's also going to be um, numerous hand sanitizing stations throughout the building and all of the classrooms are going to be equipped with hand sanitizer and also uh, sanitizing wipes in case the students have a spill or want to wipe something off on their desk. Water fountains are going to be closed this year. So that means we're going to ask all of the students to bring a water bottle with them to school and they can always refill them as needed in the nurse's office. Our nurse, Mrs. Stebbins, is going to be providing a little bit more information about all of this health and safety issues and how we're going to remain safe. And also she's going to talk a little bit about the nurse's office and the protocols. Um, all of the students were divided into cohorts and you should have received your child's cohort um, information in the mail. If you haven't, please call the front office and my secretary will be able to help you out with the correct cohort for your child. 
students are going to remain in their small group cohorts throughout the day. And the reason for that is to limit contact with other group cohorts. It doesn't mean the students are going to sit straight in a chair in a room all day long. It just means we're going to limit their contact with other students. And we're going to do this by putting them into cohort groups. Cohort groups will allow us to reduce that exposure contact. Students will move from their rooms for gym, health, all of their cycle classes, for lab classes, for study hall classes. So please don't think that your child's gonna sit in a room and not be able to move. There will be some movement. And we're also going to have teachers available that are gonna provide some extra little breaks if the student needs it, if they need to go to the bathroom or they need to take a little bit of a walk. We do understand that for a middle school student, one of the most exciting things they do when they come to middle school is start to switch classes every period. So they're still going to have different teachers for all of their classes, but they're just not going to move as much until we get past the pandemic. You will get a schedule for your child in the welcome packet, and it's going to direct them to their cohort classroom that they're going to start their day off in. So please look forward to that in your welcome packet, which should be coming by the end of next week. Um, we still have our food service program, which is Chartwells. So breakfast and lunch is going to be provided uh, in the school. And students are welcome to purchase breakfast and lunch, pack their own breakfast and lunch. The only thing that we're asking is students don't share their snacks, don't share their drinks. And I know that's really hard. I always want to share my snacks with my friends and I want their snacks too but we're not gonna share any snacks or drinks. Again, same reason, health and safety. Finally, all of this information is gonna be mailed home. So don't worry if you think I'm talking fast or you feel a little bit overwhelmed. And this video is gonna stay up on our website so you'll be able to refer to it. Um, we totally have you covered here. We totally understand what you're going through and we really love our middle school students and want to do what's best for them. And we want to do everything that we can in our power to make this a safe, enjoyable, wholesome learning environment. So next up that's going to speak to you is Mr. Dallas. He's our vice principal. He's awesome. He's going to go over the handbook, certain student rules, talk to you about attendance and different things that you're going to see this year. After Mr. Dallas, we're going to have a um, little introduction from the nurse, from our boost coordinator, coordinator, also our guidance counselors. We're going to have talk about our morning announcements, how you can follow us on social media, and all of the different ways that we're going to keep in touch with you. So stay tuned. Mr. Dallas is up next. Hello, this is Mr. Dallas, the vice principal at the middle school. I'm really excited for this upcoming year. I know it's going to pose some new challenges but I know we're going to come together and do everything we can to make this a great year for our students. I just want to go over a few things that will help your child through their middle school experience. The first thing I want to talk about is attendance. Attendance, it is imperative for all of our students to come to school, whether they're in person or when they're virtual, they need to complete their all assignments. Um, when they're in school, it's really important that they come and that they're here those days that they can come. It's also important that they're doing their work at home. And anything that you could do to help your child complete their work and make sure they're staying on top of things uh, would be great. One great tool that you have is OnCourse, which is our grading system. Our teachers are very good with putting in grades and information in there. Uh, please, if you could check that daily, if not weekly, to make sure that your child is not falling behind, that would be great. Uh, it's really important, especially with virtual learning, not to fall behind because it starts to pile up and it gets really difficult to get back on top of things. So we want to make sure we get into a routine and that all of our students are doing work every day, whether they're in school or at home. It is the student's responsibility to come, and to, come to school every day and be on time. Uh, they 
all of our students have a bus that they have that they could use and they have the ability to wake up on time therefore it is their responsibility to get here um, they can also get in trouble if they have excessive lates to school or if they have excessive unexcused absences so we need to help them get to school on time every day let's go over a few of the disciplinary issues that seem to arise uh, every year so there is no chewing gum during the school day. We have a limited staff of custodians and they can't spend all day picking up and cleaning up gum from the bottom of chairs and desks. So there is no gum allowed during the day. Students, their cell phones should be off upon entering school. The cell phone should be off and it should be away in a bag, uh, off and away all day. If they have to call home, if they're sick, they would go to the nurse and call home. If it was something else that they had to call home for, they would ask to go to the main office. Um, they should not and cannot go to the bathroom and call home on a cell phone. If there's an emergency, we have to be aware of that. And we can't do that if they're calling in the bathroom. So we do urge them to please use the phone in the main office if they have to call anybody. Um, one simple rule is the golden rule uh, that we teach our students treat everyone with respect treat others the way you want them to treat you and you'll be just fine in the middle school uh, so please also urge students to use the golden rule the dress code two things really come up with that one is the jeans with the large cutout sections uh, students cannot wear those jeans with those large cutout sections to school um, so if they do, uh, you're going to have to come and bring them a change of pants, which I'm sure you're very busy and don't want to do. So please don't send them to school with the large cutout sections. Also shorts. Shorts have to be longer than the child's uh, fingertips. If their arm is down by their sides, it has to be longer than their fingertips. And that's really it for me. The other thing I'm going to say is, if there's an issue, please call me. My secretary's name is Connie. Her extension is 5605. Let's work it out together. Uh, so don't hesitate to call me anytime you, that there's an issue. And up next, you will hear from other key staff who will help guide your child through the upcoming school year. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Hey guys, I'm Mrs. Stein and director of the Boost program. I wanted to let you know that this is just in. Um, Boost is still on for this year, so you can attend Boost after school on the days that you attend school, and virtually you can get some help with your homework on the days that you are at home. So be on the lookout for the application. Just in case you don't know um, what Boost is, Boost is our after school program totally completely free you get a snack you do your homework and then you get to participate in some fun activities so that you get to choose your schedule so be on the lookout for the registration application all right have a great day bye bye hi parents i'm mrs mazza one of the school counselors at buna regional middle school i'm assigned students with the last names beginning with the letters m through z i just wanted to put a face to a name in case you don't know me already and go over a few important things I'm going to go ahead and hide my video, but you can still hear my voice. The first thing I like to go over is our student database system on course or on course connect. The easiest way to access this as a parent is to go to bunoschools.org, go over to four families, click on on course, go down to the parent and guardian link, and this is where you'll be logging in. I know some of you are already familiar with this if you've already had a student go through Buna Regional Schools, uh, but I just wanted to take a minute to review. So on the right hand side here, you'll see for guardians, you'll be entering your username and password. As I said, many of you already know that if you're new to our district, then a mailing will be going home with your username and password. If you ever have any questions about that or any questions in general navigating on Course Connect, or logging in, please call the guidance office at the middle school. Uh, the other counselor, Mr. Mitchell or myself will be able to help you or our secretary, Kim Albert.
Uh, OnCourse is a great way for you to keep track of your students' grades, assignments that are coming up. It's also a tool that you can use to contact uh, your child's teachers if you have any questions. Uh, students are also encouraged to use OnCourse, sometimes maybe even on a daily basis if they'd like to. Uh, you'll see on the left-hand side here, this is where they're able to log in. They are given a username and password. Their username is their school email, and then they have a unique password. That username and password is also used to log into our Chromebooks or any desktops at the school. Uh, in the guidance department, we encourage students to keep track, uh, especially if they're not the greatest with writing in their assignment book. Uh, we encourage that, but we know sometimes they'd rather use technology and it's a great way for them as well to log in, check what's due, look at their assignments, see if there's anything that, anything that is missing, All right? The other thing I wanted to go over with you is our focus on social and emotional learning. At Buna Regional Middle School, we think it's very important to, you know, talk about social emotional learning on a daily basis, uh, just for the, the well-being of our students uh, mentally. So you'll see here, uh, I have some slides pulled up. During morning announcements, we announce an intention for the week. You'll see the first one here. We, last year, we started September 23rd. And the intention is this week, I will try again when I make a mistake. This is elaborated on during our morning announcements and also in the classroom. And it's something, like I said, that we focus on throughout the week. Some other fun activities that we like to do throughout the school year is a day called Know Your Classmates, where we encourage students to approach someone that they don't normally talk to and learn just one fun fact about them. Uh, later in the year, we do a, another similar activity called No One Eats Alone, where we switch up the uh, tables in the cafeteria and encourage students to start a conversation with someone they don't know very well. In addition to that, we have uh, character traits that we stand for at the middle school, respect, responsibility, right choices, and effort. And those are things that are continually brought up during morning announcements, uh, encouraged by the teachers for the students, and that we reward students for throughout the year as well for, for exhibiting those traits. Um, I hope you enjoyed your orientation and I look forward to meeting you all. Hello, sixth grade students and parents. Uh, this is Mr. Mitchell again, and I am going to go over with you two very important things about the middle school. The first is your schedule. Now, most of you um, probably have received your schedule or you will shortly, maybe on the first day of school uh, or before, hopefully. Uh, and when you get your schedule, you're gonna notice that there are something called pods on there. All right, now a pod is a length of time. Each pod is approximately 15 minutes long. So when you look at your schedule, you are going to see pod one is a start of your day, which is at 745 in the morning. And it's going to go all the way down to pod 26, which ends at 215, which is our dismissal time. All your classes are going to be distributed throughout these pods. So for example, say on your schedule pod one, uh, you have science class there. All right, you might also see next to pod two, science is there again. And also next to pod three, you'll see science again. That means that from pod one to pod three, you will be in your science class uh, for 45 minutes. All right, because three pods, 15 minutes each, 45 minutes. At the end of pod three, you might now see, say pod four is social studies. And you might see again, social studies next to pod five and pod six. Social studies is also a 45 minute class. So you would start your day, pod one, you go to your locker, all right, in the morning, uh, you get your things for the day and you would report to your first pod class and then you would just follow your schedule throughout the day. So you go to science, maybe first three pods and then pod four, five and six, you might go to social studies. Say pod seven, you might now go to math class or maybe language arts, all right? You also are gonna have your lunch in there. If you look at the schedule I'm showing you right now, our lunches are from pod nine through pod 20. You are gonna have two pods for your lunch period, which is 30 minutes. You might have lunch, say pod 13, 14. It might be later in the day. It might be earlier in the day, but your lunch will also be in there. Also in your schedule, you're gonna see your cycle classes. Cycle classes are things like art, horticulture, uh, computers, uh, of course, gym or health. You're gonna see those classes in your schedule as well. So that's what a pod is, and that's how you're gonna read your schedule. This will take a few days, even weeks, for you to get used to it. Uh, when you do have your schedule, try not to lose it. 
All right, we usually have you um, attach it to your agenda book. That way it's there so you can look at it as needed. But if you do lose your schedule, you're gonna go down to the guidance office and Mrs. Albert or myself or Mrs. Nazza will help you get a new schedule. So that is your schedule and how you read it. The second thing I'd like to talk to you about is our exciting clubs and activities and also sports that we offer at the middle school. As Waylon Echeverria um, explained to you in his video, uh, we have a lot of exciting clubs and activities, something for everybody. We have art club, we have choir, drama club, a newspaper student council there's literally something for everyone for you to get involved in and we encourage you to get involved it's a great way to meet new friends it's a great way to get to know your teachers better and it's a great way to just kind of relieve some stress from the school day and stay at the school uh, with your friends and hang out and, and learn something new uh, we also have sports as well all right in the fall we have um field hockey we also have cross country and boys and girls soccer and unfortunately this fall we do not have sports um, but we're hopeful in the winter time we pick up uh, with uh, boys and girls basketball in the winter time and in the spring of course we have uh, baseball and we also have softball for you to choose if you're an athlete in the spring we have a lot going on at the middle school uh, we're very excited for you to get into the building and to meet you all and i hope you all enjoy the rest of your summer and we will see you all in a few weeks bye bye hello and welcome all sixth grade parents my name is mr fields and I'm the program manager of the youth center here at the middle school. Um, just want to take a few minutes, give you an idea of kind of what we do in the building, uh, what our role is. We've been in the district for 20 years. We've been at the high school since 2000. We've been in the middle school since 2005. I've been with both programs. Some of you probably know me because you've had kids go th through the system before. Um, I've been with the program uh, since 2000, so from day one. And in 2005, I came over here to and we got the grant over at the middle school and I came over here to run this program, okay? We're a grant funded program, just to give you a little background, we're, uh, we're a grant funded program um, to the Division of Child and Families and we are actually employed by Atlanticare. So it's a collaboration between the state of New Jersey, Atlanticare Behavioral Health and Buna Regional School District, okay? Um, so some of the things that we do, uh, we are here Monday, Wednesday. No, that's not true. We're here um, Monday through Friday, generally 7.30 to 3.30, and we do a wide range of, of services for the students, okay? Um, probably know about some of the trips that we've done over the years. Um, everything is totally free and totally voluntary, so the kids can get to pick and choose kind of what they want to do, all right? Um, in years past, uh, up till this last year, uh, a number that I'm pretty proud of is that we have, I think we had close to 90% of the, of the student population in the building signed up with us. So that tells me a lot. That tells me that you, the parents, trust us. Uh, tells me that administration trusts us and that the teachers trust us, giving us referrals and things like that. So, and it also tells me that the kids want to be with us, which is great. Um, so, like I was starting to say, um, we do a lot of trips. Uh, we do about... Now, this is in a traditional year, so everybody knows this year is going to be a little bit different uh, because of the remote learning and the virtual and who's going to be here and who's not. And we'll have to see, you know, how the year plays out. But in a traditional year, um, we'll do one trip a month. Again, totally free. Uh, and in the summertime, we're here 12 months. So in the summertime, we do uh, one trip a week. OK, obviously, this summer we didn't do that because, like I said, things are different. Um, we also do healthy youth development. We do individual sessions with students. Uh, we do group work with students. Um, we'll do bereavement uh, counseling. Um, and I have a, I have a little a, a short slideshow after this that lists our services. So I'm not going to go into every sing, uh, single detail, but um, the program is open to six, seven, eight grade students in this building. Okay, as long as you have a, a consent form signed. So that's you know, basically a permission slip signed by you, the parent. I have one here. I know it's going to be blurry. I apologize, but that's kind of what it looks like. Okay. And I had a discussion with my staff and we came up with um, how, how are we going to get it to you, the, the sixth grade parents? I didn't want to do a mass email. I mean, a mass mailing. So I think this is what we're going to do. All the students that are in-house are going to get um, this consent form given, given to them in school. Students that chose and, and families that chose to do remote learning for now, um, we are going to, I'm going to get that information 
and I, we will email all those students and families the consent form um, to, you know, to make that decision if you want to be a part of the program or not. Like I said, there's 90% of this building almost every year is registered with us. So that, you know, that doesn't mean that they're in our office every day, every week, every month. It could be like, okay, I, I have a consent form signed um, from when I was in sixth grade. That's the other thing I wanted to say too, is once you sign this consent form for the program, that's it. You're good and your child is good until they graduate eighth grade, okay? So you don't have to get it signed every year. So, you know, for example, Johnny got his, permit, uh, her, his consent form signed in sixth grade and then in seventh grade in the middle of the year, he hears about this trip that he wants to go on over the announcements and, and you know, just sees posters up and things like that or go, that the youth center is going on this trip and he wants to, and he wants to go. All he has to do is come, come in as long as there's enough space for him and, and ask Mr. Scott or Mr. Mr. Scott. I go by Mr. Scott. <laughs> so Mr. Scott, I want to sign up for this trip. Okay, Johnny, no problem. Grades are good, staying out of trouble, no problem. All right, you're good, sign up. First 15, 20 kids, here you go, you're good. So, so that student would be able to go on that trip even if they didn't participate in anything else in the youth center. That's why this, this program, I believe in this program so much and I've been here for so long is because it's open to every single kid in the building. You do not have to have an issue to come down to the youth center. Matter of fact, you know, I, sometimes it's looked at as it's more fun than, you know, going for counseling, which I'm okay with that, but we're also here for that. You know, that's the, that's really the, the reason why we're here is to help in any way that we can. If it's, if it's um, counseling, if it's tutoring, if it's, you know, just a student had a, a bad weekend and they need to talk to somebody on Monday morning. If the student had a great weekend and they want to come tell us about it, that's that's what we're here for. We're, we're here to try to guide um, our kids and our families in, in a positive direction, help them graduate uh, eighth grade and move on up into high school or wherever they may be going after that. I think that's about it. So like I said, I wanted to just wanted to welcome everybody, let you know about our program. Um, if you have any questions, um, like I said, you can call me. My extension here at the building is 5482. And I'd be happy to answer anything. Okay. Welcome. Hope everybody has a great year. Hi, my name is Megan Bjornsson, and I'm the Learning Disabilities Teacher Consultant on the Child Study Team in the Middle School. My job is to work closely with teachers, counselors, the youth center, and administrators to help any students that are struggling academically, socially, or emotionally. We work closely together to provide support and accommodations and modifications that will help these students be successful within the classroom. Hi, my name is Kristen Stebbins and I am the Buda Middle School nurse. I would like to go over a few things that may concern you and your child this school year. If your child uses an inhaler at home, an inhaler may be necessary to be kept in school as well in case of emergencies. Please discuss this with your doctor and turn in a completed asthma action plan form with the doctor's signature on it, along with the medication in the original container with the prescription on it. If needed, a blank asthma action plan may be sent home with the student upon request. Please contact me if further accommodations with obtaining this form are needed. Please bring in inhalers and not nebulize medication due to COVID-19. Students are not allowed to bring in perfumes or body sprays due to student allergies and asthma. Please encourage your child to carry deodorant with them instead to use following gym class if needed. If your child cannot participate in gym, a doctor note must be turned in excusing your child along with a return date for gym participation. Any other medications that need to be distributed at school, including over-the-counter medicine, such as Tylenol, must have a doctor's order. A medication order form can be obtained from the school to be used. Again, further accommodations with obtaining this form can be uh, accommodated. S students attending in person or virtually are required by the state to have updated vaccines. If you are unsure if your child is up to date, please contact your child's doctor or me. Again, even students attending virtually must submit proof of up-to-date vaccination. 
Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, all students will be scanned, screened, coming to school. If your child is sent home from school due to signs and symptoms of illness, they must be picked up by someone on the contact list as soon as possible. If your child shows any signs of illness, please keep them home until they feel better. Students must be without a fever, vomiting, or diarrhea for a full 24 hours before returning to school. A doctor's note may be needed prior to the return to school if advised by the nurse. If you need help finding a doctor for your child, please contact me at 856-697-0100. Leave a voicemail for the nurse if there is no answer and I will be able to access your voicemail from my email and contact you back. Thank you and I look forward to meeting you all. Hello, and on behalf of the Buena Regional Middle School PTO officers and members, we want to welcome the incoming sixth grade students and parents to our school. My name is Carol O'Connell, and I am the PTO president. Our organization is a collaboration between parents and teachers whose goal is to establish a close relationship between home, school, and the community. We work to create a rich experience for children and promote parent involvement in the middle school community. By working together, we hope each student, parent, and teacher will feel confident that they are truly part of a team that is working to make each child's educational experience the best it can be. The middle school years are ones where research shows it is even more crucial to have a strong level of parent involvement within our children's lives in order to foster student achievement and other areas of success. I think that you will find the next three years will be very exciting and eventful yet go past in a blink of an eye. Our PTO provides exciting opportunities, events, and treats for all of our students. In order to accomplish this, we often assist with building events, provide fundraisers, hold raffles, and so much more. We encourage all families to get involved. No amount of time or financial support is ever too small and is always very much appreciated. We realize how busy all parents, guardians, grandparents, cousins, and families' lives are and welcome any level of involvement you are able to provide. We are hoping to hold our first general meeting in later fall, but we'll provide more specific information as the year progresses. The first step is getting involved this year is to connect to all the middle school social media feeds, websites, and emails to stay informed. Our PTO can be found on Instagram, Facebook, the middle school website, and through our email at bunamiddle pto at gmail.com. We look forward to connecting, meeting, and working with each and every one of you in the upcoming school year. Welcome all incoming sixth graders and families. This is a quick notice for you to make sure you follow BRMS on our social media websites. On Instagram, we are at brms.official. On Facebook, we are at BRMS Official, or you can simply search Buena Regional Middle School. And on Twitter, you can follow us at BRMS Official. We post often with updates, school news, and pictures. So make sure to follow and welcome all incoming sixth graders. While you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just open up the YouTube app on your phone or tablet, or visit youtube.com on your computer. Search BRMS Announcements and click subscribe so you never miss out on what's going on at BRMS. All right, parents, I hope all of that information helped you and I hope you know that we are all here for you and we're all here for your students. So this is going to conclude our parent orientation. Again, our first ever virtual orientation. Hopefully we never have to do this again. And stay safe. Enjoy the last little bit of summer, and to all my cohort kids, I'll see you really soon. And to all my remote kids, I hope I get to see you pretty soon too. So take care, thanks for coming, and stay safe.